Welcome to Poor Man Mods. Today we're going to be putting on upgraded sway bars in this AE86. We have front and it's kind of heavy and rear white line sway bars. It's come with new hardware, new bushings, everything. From the looks of it, it's going to be pretty simple, but you know it's never simple when it looks easy. So let's see how long it's going to take us. Stay tuned to watch it. Oh, hey! Well, uh, we decided to do the rear sway bar first since it was already up in the rear. And there's only four total bolts holding this on. And we're going to go ahead and take off the first one, which is on the end link right here. It's a 14 millimeter. Alright, we got this out. Now we're going to do the other side. As soon as we get that out, we can take it off the rear and replace it. It's looking pretty simple. Look at that. It's all floppy now. Now we just take it off the rear end. So what would be a benefit of upgrading your sway bars? Well, when you get a bigger sway bar, when you go around turns, it makes your car roll a lot more. Yeah. So it like, if you're taking a left-hand turn, it makes your car roll to the right. So it's like you're going to roll over. So it takes all the weight from yeah. the body and supplies it to the outer, yeah. the outermost wheels. Yeah, they're called sway bars because it makes you sweat. So I can see the benefits. Since this is a race car, we're upgrading it because we want it to uh, roll a lot more. Yeah, we want it to roll over actually. Yeah. But street applications tend to stay pretty stiff and flat all through the turns. Just makes it a little more comfortable. Oh, I was wrong. Boom. All right, so we got the old sway bar compared with the new one. As you can see, the new one is much, much thicker, and it also has these holes in the side, which is for adjustability. We remove the end link and put this where the factory end link is and use this as the end link, and this can go in either one of these holes. The further forward you go, the stiffer it is, and the further back, the softer it is. We're going to run about the second hole up because it's more of a straight machine. We want to be aggressive, but not completely ridiculously radical. So it's kind of straightforward. It's only about four bolts to put on, and it's completely adjustable. I think this might be kind of interesting putting in. All right, so now we're taking out the factory mount that holds the end link on so we can put on our new white line end link. And there's the old end link. Alright, so the kit comes with two brackets. You just need to find the one that directly lines up with the holes. The other one's going to be a little offset, so this is the right one. Use your factory bolts. You need to get it in the hole. Just like that. Alright, now we're not going to tighten this all the way. We're just going to leave it loose and get everything hooked up just in case it's on wrong. We don't have to undo all of our work. Put your end link on. See if this nut has as much trouble as the other bolts. No, it doesn't. Alright, so we use the factory uh, bushing mounts on this. So what you do, you take the factory mount, put this bushing in here, but before you do that, you got to put some grease in it. Otherwise, it'll be all squeaky and wear out. Just like that. Get it on the outside. Mmm. Greasy. Mmm. Mmm. Rub your finger in that, Mike. Mmm. Greasy now, up. Just like that. Ah, uh, it feels so good to be in the It's so slippery. Uh, so they aren't lying when they say everything's better when wet. So then you take your greasy bush, hing, get over this here sway bar, and then you, uh, you, uh, get a stock mount and just like, oh, that felt good. Then you do it on the other side.
rack it. Alright, we're going to try to put the sway bar in. From past experience with my car, it's kind of difficult for one person to do it, but we're going to try it because it kind of gets like lopsided and awkward and it's kind of hard to hold a bar while you put a nut in. But we'll give, we'll, we'll give it a shot. We'll see, we'll see how this here goes. Get it so that you have some room to work with. All right, so we're, this jack is right here because we had to jack off um, up the rear end because we had to get the sway bar to line up with the end links um, because since the suspension was all the way down when this was mounted to the axle it couldn't line up with the end links so we had to push it up and now that it's up and meeting with the end links we get to secure it with a bolt okay now if you get this kit this may confuse some people what you need to do this comes with three washers it comes with two big and one small you take the first big one put it through the bolt then put it through the bushing. You get the second big one and put it on this side of the bush bushing. Now this is for you don't want the bushing, the sleeve inside the bushing to move in and out so it needs the bigger washers. You get it in your hole in the sway bar and then you get the smaller washer on with the nut. And there it is. And everything is finger tight right now. So this rear sway bar is completely in. Now we can adjust it if we want to, but this is the setting Tony wanted. So now we can just tighten everything down and the rear is done. All right, so we got the rear all finished. We're gonna put this front sway bar on now. Um, it looks just as simple as doing the rear. There's one bolt on each end link on the side. And what you need, you need a 10 millimeter wrench and a 12 millimeter. And you get the 10 and put it on the actual end link itself down here and hold it and then you need the 12 to loosen the nut because if you don't it usually just spins but now it's kind of loose so you need to hold that and once this nut comes off the whole thing pops out all right once you get your top and bottom nut off the link just kind of pops off and Tony has a jack that he can assist us with right there All right, so now that we got this end link off, we need to take out this bushing bracket thingy, which is just two bolts. I don't even know if they can see that. Well, now they can. Now they can, now they can see that. That guy right there. So we're taking this off, and then once we get this off, we'll do the other, the other two things over there, and this sway bar should come out. But it doesn't look like it's going to be that fun to take out because there's a hole which I'm not too sure how we're going to wiggle it through. Okay, so Dan is over there working on this bracket. Uh, the sway bar goes through this bracket that mounts on to the chassis of the car. There's four bolts holding it in, and then this rod. This has to come off on both sides so we can drop the whole thing and take the sway bar out, because if you don't do that, there's literally no way you can get the sway bar out. So it's just four bolts, we're dropping it, and then we'll be able to take the sway bar out, put the new one through this, and mount it all back up. All right, so this is the old front sway bar with the two brackets. Now we just got to swap the brackets on to the white line. All we got to do is position these inside that hole. And then once they're in, we can work on the, uh... so messy. <laughs> We're putting bushings up on his front sway bar right now. Um, so once we put all that back up, the next step is to put the bushings on the sway bar and then secure it to whatever these are called. So that's our next step. And then after that, we'll have to compress our shocks so that we can get the right adjustment on our sway bar so we can attach all that and then once that's done it's downhill from there babe we might be running tonight <laughs> alright so once you get the sway bar mounts up which are pretty straightforward it's time to put the end links on what you have to do you have to get a bolt 
it's kind of difficult. You have to get this bolt on the sway bar going this way. There's not much room, so it's pretty difficult. Uh, we didn't want to show you that because there are a lot of curse words going on there. But then you get the end link on this bracket here, which is just a bolt, washer, and then we're going to have another washer here. And then we're going to put this down in the control arm like that and mount it up. Another washer on here, and then the final nut. Now that this is all secure, we can put the nut and washer on the bottom, secure it to the control arm, and it's done. Alright, once you get the end link on the sway bar, you have to jack up the control arm to get the nut on the bottom. Alright, so we finished the front sway bar, we got the rear sway bar done. Now that this now that this thing has one Freddy power, this thing is gonna handle so good through the turns, it's gonna be so quick, it's gonna be awesome. And it's good to note that when we finished doing both sway bars, we just went over it with some white lithium grease, even though we already greased the bushings, we just want to be extra careful and make sure that there weren't any annoying squeaks because that's really annoying and stupid and we don't want the bushings to wear out. So it's just kinda like a preventive maintenance type thing. So it was pretty straightforward, it's just a few bolts. I mean, you shouldn't have too much trouble with it. We kind of had some trouble with just some bolts that were stripping, but that was kind of our fault, not the kit's fault. So, we hope you enjoyed it, hope you learned something. Thanks for watching. All right, wait, we're done recording? Yeah, we're done. All right, we're just to get out of here. Good luck. Oh my, oh, it's so awkward. Big man in a uh, little space. Oh God. Oh hey, it looks God. like you're going down on my car. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, it's like wearing a tight shirt.